thank you so much for joining us. Talk to us about, you know, we talk a lot about the humanitarian angle, which we do not want to ignore, but the economic devastation as well that you're facing by one estimates, you're looking at a destruction of almost $100 billion of Ukrainian assets. Can you put that into perspective of us, the economic toll this is having? Uh, look, uh, the economic cost of the war is increasing dramatically. Uh, every day we are, you know, under the bombing attacks actually from the air, from the planes. So that's why uh, President Zelensky was so very clear when he was delivering his messages in the United States Congress about no fly zone. Yes, it's true. Our cities are under the bombing all the time from the air, and you have to understand that. So the toll we are paying, the price we are paying, it's not just an economic price, which is a huge price. You know, a hundred billion dollars destroyed assets was at the beginning of the war, and it was somewhere uh, at the end of the first week of the war. But mm. each each extra day uh, mm. bring us more, uh, more and more destroyed uh, assets. Uh, look, we already have several cities which do not exist anymore. For example, the city of Mariupol, it's almost destroyed. We don't have any theater there. We don't have. Uh, any house there, we don't have any apartment complex, we don't have roads there, we don't have even people in there. So people uh, yeah. were, who uh, we were able to evacuate some of these people. So uh, I'm saying that uh, look, every day we are losing more and more and more. So, but uh, in terms of, um, you know, uh, united, uh, I would say, assistance to us, which is, you know, provided by our international allies, which are right. leaded by the United States of America. We do count uh, not only on money, but we also count on sanctions, sanctions against Russia. So those, whoever, but oh, yes. like those sanctions are, are in place right now. I am curious, as an economic advisor, I, obviously you have to deal with the current economic situation and trying to guide your country through a war. At some point, whatever the outcome of this is, has there been discussions about how any sort of rebuilding process would even take place? Yes, we are discussing this with uh, different international partners. We have a working group which is, uh, which is um, you know, uh, creating a plan of rebuilding of Ukraine. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's also true that you have to understand that uh, currently 50% of our economy, I mean, of our businesses are not operational. Uh, because of uh, because of uh, Russian fascists who are, mm, you know, fighting against Ukraine. Uh, so what we are planning to do, yes, uh, since the assets are destroyed and since you have to rebuild, we have to rebuild the economy, we have to rebuild the country, mm -hmm. we have to rebuild those houses. So we are counting on those money which were accumulated already. I mean, I mean we are planning to accumulate this money in the rebuilding fund. Uh, for Ukraine, and we count on the money which are were frozen from the Central Bank of Russian Federation. We right. also count on a uh, possibility to get extra financing uh, from the arrested uh, property of Russian oligarchs and those who are in, in a cycle of uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, for example, uh, how we see the process. Uh, he, Oleg, he, uh, yes. the sanctions process in itself, there have been, to Romain's point, a number that have been placed. What else in terms of sanctions would you need to see to truly cause a dent uh, and create some action here? Uh, look, in my view, Russia continues to fool its army machine through exporting uh, its uh, natural resources currently. Like oil has a significant share in all receipts of Russian budget revenue. It is estimated as much as 40% of total revenue. Daily, they receive somewhere around 700 million, 700 million dollars daily. So, and these money are, you know, these money are used to feed their machine and to kill our people, to kill our civilians, to rape our women, you know, to destroy our city. So all sanctions were necessary and needed. However, what can make a real difference now is cutting Russia from all possibilities to supply their oil to international market. We are seeing shipping on Russian oil worldwide should yeah. be prohibited. Yeah. And do that's you, why do that you think that, that will happen, particularly when it comes to Germany and some of the European nations? Do you think they're prepared to go that far? Uh, yeah, I understand your question, but I must tell you, first of all, it's not a question about just economics. 
yes, it's going to be an immediate effect in terms of uh, some increase in prices for, uh, uh, for oil. Uh, but it's going to be a very short uh, period of time. In the mid-run, we would, should expect that it's going to be an increase in production of oil in Middle uh, East and in some other uh, parts of the world. Therefore, we are going to absorb more supply of oil to international market, and it's going to be a correction. But if we are thinking in, in terms of long-term perspective, so from my point of view, it's going to be only benefit for everybody um, in the world internationally because of we are going to have more predictable environment, we are going to have more stable and secure situation. But if you're asking about our European partners, actually mm -hmm. President Zelensky delivered uh, his speech yesterday in Bundestag, the parliament of Germany, and he was very clear. He was asking not to build a new world. So please, please do not build a new world. And what we understand that they have to do that, and they will be forced to do that, mm. not only because we want this to be done. And actually, we are going, uh, we do believe that it's bloody money. Whoever is buying whatever from Russia is sending bloody money to Vladimir Putin to, and to his army, to his, uh, you know, company of his friends, mm -hmm. sending money to kill our people. And we do consider this bloody money as a part of the war crime. Whoever is financing, mm -hmm. whoever mm -hmm. is financing this military machine of Russia is committing a war crime. And we are going to win this war and we are going to sue everybody who was doing these things. We started to circulate this information. We are going to make very uh, strong messages very soon in terms of this. So everybody who is in this business has to value the risk and the profit they are making. And the risk is high. And this risk is a risk uh, n n n n not because, uh, you, you know, somebody is just trying to make some money on the uh, business as usual. No, it's, a, it's really a war crime. And we would this should be also scale. 